If you're wondering if engineering is the right fit for you, if an engineering degree can actually give you what you want in your career, and maybe you're considering changing majors, we're talking all about those things in this video, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If you wanna be a successful engineer, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. I got an awesome question for an existing civil engineering student today from my alma mater, the University of Delaware, so big ups to the blue hens out there, and the question goes like this. Hey Jake, I've come across a dilemma during my undergraduate studies. I'm currently a civil engineering major, and I'm debating whether or not this is something I'm I'm actually interested in. I've always wanted to be in the business side of things rather than the technical side of the career. I personally can relate to that. What would be best to switch it up to a business degree halfway through my college career or continue engineering and possibly pursue a master's in business? In the comments below, let me know if you're somebody who has this mix of engineering brain and business people person type personality. So in this video, I'm going to give this student and all of you 1% Nation my five reasons why it's worth sticking with it. This is a great question. I love this because I can literally relate on a personal note for the first three, four semesters in engineering, civil engineering at UD. Yes, we went to the same school. So this is just a perfect question for me to respond to. I believe that I was gonna fail out every semester. I wasn't sure if this was actually the right fit for me. And I get this question very often from students from all over the world. They're halfway through their freshman year or their sophomore year or even into their junior year. And people will say very similar things to this question. I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. This is really hard. I just don't know if I'm passionate about this stuff. And they question it. It's tough. It's impossible to know. Before I gave some advice, I wanted some more details. I asked how far along the student was and what types of courses they've taken. And he says that he's halfway through his sophomore year. So three full semesters in. He's already taken Calc 1, 2, and 3, which are some of the harder classes, has taken physics, has taken computer science, which these are all the snag courses for civil engineers. These are the hard ones. These are the weeder courses that may make you switch to business or something else. The only true remaining challenging courses are dynamics and fluid mechanics isn't easy. Fortunately, at Delaware for civil engineering, we don't have to take thermodynamics, which I believe is one of the most challenging engineering courses out there. So with that being said, you guys know all the details now. I gave this student five reasons why I believe it's worth getting that engineering degree and staying the course and hitting those goals and just grinding this out because it's gonna be worth it. So let's jump right into the five reasons why you should stick with it in this situation. Number one is a skill set fit. The student was good enough at math and science and physics type things to survive Calc 2. I had to actually retake Calc 2. I got a D in it and it wasn't good enough for a civil engineering major and had to retake it. And I actually dropped computer science, which this student has passed. I took a different version from C++, took a MATLAB version, and he's through physics, just has to survive dynamics, which I know the professor personally in the spring, is gonna be able to make it through. But I think if you get through one semester freshman year, or even two semesters freshman year, and you were just absolutely struggling in every class, particularly the math ones, then maybe your skill set is just not the right fit for engineering. There's more math classes ahead. He's still gotta take engineering math one, two, and three, structural analysis and soil mechanics, and material science and everything else is just math, 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 right? But it becomes more applied from here and he's already through the more challenging math related courses and because he's not in this absolute struggle type situation, it's clear to me that he's gonna make it and he's gonna survive so he's at least the right skill set for engineering so he should stick with it. Reason number two is you are already three semesters in. I think yes, after one semester in engineering you can consider switching and even after a full two semesters or after your full freshman year, year, you can potentially consider switching, but if you are halfway through sophomore year or all the way through sophomore year, honestly, you have been through all the hardest stuff. You've already gotten basically half a degree and it really is starting to get downhill from here. In the entrepreneurial world, this is actually what they call the dip. You've been through a bunch of hard stuff. It's impossible to know that from here on out, it just gets a little bit easier. It just feels like you're stuck in this very challenging situation, but this is where a lot of people give up. They make that mistake of not actually identifying that they're at the bottom, which again is impossible, and then rising from that bad part and just continuing on the grind and being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And they give up three feet from gold. I told this student that I literally have two books that are a perfect 
theoretical match for this situation. Because if you're in this really challenging scenario in your life, like engineering school or trying to pass the PE exam later or in graduate school or whatever, then it is sometimes really easy to just give up right in the thick of it. But maybe that breakthrough, maybe that groove, maybe that snowball effect was just about to take off and you can't give up now. And I think that's where this student is halfway through sophomore year, honestly, that is almost a third of the way through college. You've just been through enough already, so you can't switch now, you should stick it out for sure. Reason number three is the empowerment that you get and the respect that you get in the workforce with an engineering degree. With an engineering degree, you can literally go on to do anything that you want in your career. If you wanna just focus on the business world, if you wanna go into law, if you wanna go into any other STEM fields, really if you wanna go into anything and you have built up a little bit of a skill set in that, say you wanna get into business and marketing and sales and whatever, what that engineering degree shows the workforce and anyone that you're networking with, prospective employers, whatever, is that you can problem solve anything, you can figure out a lot, you are smarter than average because that's what we are guys, that's what engineers are. We go through a way more challenging curriculum in undergrad, so it just shows that we are more intelligent than average and you lose that if you're going to switch majors, right? So myself looking back, being in this situation, 11, 12, 13 years ago. This is something else that is impossible to see, is impossible to forecast the level of respect and the career flexibility that an engineering degree gets. But I would very much so question giving up that future degree for something else like business. Reason number four not to switch and to stick it out to engineering is that if you go from being a social, extroverted, kind of standout individual within engineering, which is what this student considers himself, because you don't think about a career on the business side of engineering unless you have the communication and those interpersonal skills. But if you take that skill set in engineering, which is special and more rare, and then you, you put that extrovert, you put that social charismatic communicator type person in a business world, you no longer stand out. You're in what they call a red ocean. There's blood in the water. There's all these sharks and it's way more competitive than finding that unique place, finding your blue ocean. And that's fortunately what social engineers extroverts, communicators, interpersonal engineers, that's what we have. I consider myself in this category. We're more unique. We're actually standout-ish, right? It's more challenging to find people who want to lead a team and present a project and go out and meet with clients and talk at the boardroom. This stuff is a little bit more rare. So again, you lose that advantage if you give that up and you switch over to business. So I would highly consider you to stick it out and maintain that unique role in your engineering program. And tip number five is really just reinforcing this aspect of not going into a competitive world because with those business skills, with those people skills, with those managerial skills, with potential aspirations to get your MBA, this is how you can truly crush it in your engineering career. And technical roles are pretty good. We need people to become technical experts, but it's the people who actually have the ability to communicate. It's those students who stand out and they get better internships and they connect with their professors better. These are the ones who rise to their careers a little bit better after you achieve your engineering degree because your boss will be able to see you as a project manager. Your boss will be able to trust you with clients and trust you doing the sales and the business development and going to networking events and going to conferences and things like this that not everyone gets to do. So you can actually rise to become a 1% engineer much faster, much better, much smoother if you stick it out and actually get that degree. Whereas everyone in business has the ability to sell. Everyone in business has the ability to talk to people and relate and connect to others. But again, you're going to lose that if you give up that engineering degree. And this is something that's just impossible to see as a student. You don't understand the uniqueness that you have. If you can actually make it through these courses and you can survive that dip and you can make it to the end, you're going to have a much better engineering career because of the personality that you have. I've inspected all the bosses I've ever had and most of them have MBAs because they have this bridge between engineering and business. So those are my five reasons why I believe someone in this situation who's good enough at the math and science, but still an extrovert, still a people person, and potentially wants to be on the business side of engineering, should stick with it and actually stay the course and just believe that they have what it takes to make it to the end. I really do think that people in these situations should stick it out and just continue on to their journey to get that degree. If you wanna be a successful engineer, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. If this video helped you guys, make sure you leave a like, make sure you leave a comment. As you can see, sometimes I make videos specifically for people's questions. So if you have one, make sure you leave it in the comments. In the description below, you can also find a link to the Facebook group 
and the 1% Engineer Kit, which is five eBooks. Check out another video, guys. I actually have a whole bunch about this topic, if this is the right fit for you, if all this hard work is worth it, because I think it is. I cannot believe we're almost to 100. I have so many videos, so you can crush it and win. And as always, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!